Hey, welcome back, folks, to our last day of notes on Earth History, day three of three. Today's topic is absolute dating. Before, we talked about relative dating, which just kind of put things in order. Well, with absolute dating, we get an exact age. So today, you will know how scientists use absolute dating to determine the exact age of rocks. Okay? And you will know the concept of half-life and radioactive decay. All right? So, for your quick write, if you shook up 100 pennies in a box, how many think do you would be heads? Let's say you you shook 100 pennies in a box and they're all face up. And you shake them up, okay? How many do you think would be heads after you shake them up for, oh, 20 seconds? And how many do you think would be tails? Let's say you have $100 and you can only spend half of it every day. How much money do you think you would have after two days, okay? So, do your quick write for five easy points, okay? And we're going to move on here. So, absolute dating. How do we know, once again, the Earth is 4.6 billion years old? How do we know when dinosaurs went extinct? Okay? We can answer all these questions because of absolute dating. Okay, absolute dating is a method used by geologists and other scientists to determine the exact age of a rock or fossil. By analyzing the properties of atoms in rocks and fossils, we can get a really accurate date for when the rock or fossil formed. Okay, so that's absolute dating. So, on your notes, what is absolute dating? Question on the left-hand side. Answer on the right hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. Go ahead and pause this. I'm going to move on while you write this down. Okay, radioactive decay. The decay of one element into another element. That's radioactive decay. So, an example would be when lead excuse me, when uranium becomes lead. So over here we have uranium. We call this the parent material. Okay? It's unstable. It doesn't want to be uranium. Okay? And it's going to decay into what's called the daughter material. Over here, lead. So this atom here, this uranium atom, is the parent material. It's unstable, and it's going to decay okay, to the daughter material, lead. Okay? So that is radioactive decay. The decay of one element into another element. In this case, the parent material, uranium, decays into the daughter material lead. Okay, so for your notes, what is radioactive decay? Okay, make sure you write the example down, please, because it's going to be asked on the test. So, you will be assessed on that. Question on the left-hand side, an example on the left-hand side. Excuse me, question on the left-hand side, answer and example on the right-hand side. As always, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the answer bank, the blank here. Okay. Go ahead and pause this, okay? I'm gonna move on. All right, half-life. Half-life is the time it takes for half of the parent material to decay. For example, suppose I have a rock sample that has 100 atoms of uranium in it. The half-life of uranium is 4.5 billion years. So after 4.5 billion years, one half-life, okay, half of the uranium will have decayed into lead. So after one half-life, you are left with 50% uranium and 50% lead. I'm going to click to show you what's going on here. Let's say this rock here has 100 atoms or so of good old uranium. So after 4.5 billion years, okay, half of them have become lead. Okay. So, if I find a rock with 50 atoms of uranium and 50 atoms of lead, well, I know that it's 4.5 billion years old, okay? All right. So, once again, if I find a rock that, say, has 50 atoms of lead and 50 atoms of uranium, okay, I know that after one half-life, and if I know it's half-life, I know the rock is 4.5 billion years old, okay? What about after two half-lives? How much lead and uranium is left after another 4.5 billion years? 
two half-lives come by. Okay, so let's find out. Remember, the half-life of uranium is 4.5 billion years. So after another 4.5 billion years has gone by, two half-lives, we say, half the uranium will have decayed into lead. So let's watch. Another 4.5 billion years. Okay. So let's say I find a rock that has 25% uranium and 75% lead, or 25 atoms of uranium and 75 atoms of lead. I know the rock is 9 billion years old. Okay, you're starting to see a pattern here, I hope. All right, one more example. How much lead and uranium is left after another 4.5 billion years? Three half-lives. Well, let's find out. Okay, so after another 4.5 billion years... Okay, I'm left with 12.5% uranium and 87.5% lead. So, after three half-lives, I know, okay, the rock is roughly 13.5 billion years old. Okay, assuming I have, let's say, 12, 12 atoms of uranium and, okay, 88 atoms of lead. Then, or percentage-wise, 12.5% uranium and 87.5% lead, I know the rock is 3.5 billion years old. Okay? So, what is half-life? Okay? Question on the left-hand side. Answer on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank, as always, to determine, okay, which words in here best complete the sentence. Go ahead and pause this now. Make sure you write the example. I'm going to move on. Okay, so who thinks they understand half-life? So here's, let's say you have one unit of radioactive uranium-238. Remember, uranium is unstable and wants to become lead. According to this diagram, how much uranium remains after 4.5 billion years? 4.5 billion years goes by. Ooh, that's a long time. Okay. And you get half uranium and half lead. Okay. After 9 billion years, another 4.5 billion years, notice. Okay. You have hardly any uranium left. You have 75% roughly. Okay. Le uh, lead. And now you have only 25%, one-fourth of uranium uranium left after 9 billion years, okay? So, let's take a look at this graph. Let's say you have here 100 atoms of parent material. That is unstable. That will decay into the daughter material, okay? And let's say, instead of 4.5 billion years, now our half-life is 50,000 years. So, 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, 200,000, and 250,000 here. And then, Here's the amount of parent material, 100%, 75%, 50%, and 25%. Okay, so let's start time here. Let's start, okay, 100% material, okay. After 50,000 years, one half-life, okay, notice something, 50% has decayed. I have 50 percent of the parent material, the original parent material, and I have 50 percent of the daughter material. Okay, let's start our clock again. Fif another 50,000 years. Okay, two half-lives, so 100,000 years has gone by total. Now you have 75 percent daughter material and 25 percent parent material. Okay, Another 50,000 years has gone by. Okay. So, notice you have 87.5% daughter material and 12.5% okay, parent material. After how long, though? After 150,000 years, three half-lives, one, two, three, this is how much daughter and parent material remains. Okay. And then finally, after four half-lives, 200,000 years, 50, 50, 50, 50, 200,000 years, okay, I can see that, okay, 
I'm getting even less here. About 6% parent material and 94% daughter material. Okay. And after five half-lives, you can see that there's pretty much none of the parent material left. Okay. It's almost all daughter material. Okay. So that graph shows you're going to do it. We're going to be doing a lab in this class that is similar to this graph. So please try to understand this. If you have to go back, watch this again. Okay. All right. Here we go. So old versus young rock. We use uranium half-life to measure the age of the earth, which is very old. Okay. But how do we measure something that is younger, like tree rings or artifact from an ancient land, like pottery? Because carbon-14, a radioactive form of carbon, has a half-life of about 5,730 years, we can use it to date rocks, pottery, okay, and things that are younger, okay, unlike uranium, which has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. So we use carbon-14 to date the ages of younger things, okay, like tree rings or a caveman's fire, coal, okay, so younger rocks. So after 5,730 years, carbon-14 will decay into stable nitrogen here. Okay? So, to a geologist who studies rocks in order to figure out Earth's history, these radioactive elements that decay are like a clock ticking away, keeping track of time that's passed since Earth formed. It's an invaluable tool. It allows us to give us an age of rocks. It allows us to go back in time and figure out what has happened in Earth's history, major events, when the dinosaurs died out, okay, when humans first appeared. So radiometric dating has allowed us to figure out Earth's history in chronological sequence. Chronological means in an order, right? In an ordered, in an ordered sequence. So if we define radiometric dating, listen carefully, it is a dating method that uses the rate of decay of radioactive atoms, in other words, unstable atoms in rocks, by the amount of parent and daughter product, okay, product just means what's formed, to determine the absolute age of a rock, okay, so that is radiometric dating, okay, read it again carefully if you need to, I'm going to move on so we can take notes here, okay, so what is radiometric dating, okay, question on the left hand side, answer on the right hand side as always use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence okay i'm go ahead and pause this i'm going to move on all right so summarize you can always write your own in fact i encourage you to write your own and fill up your summary box but in this case read the following scenario you don't have to write it okay based on this scenario in this diagram Please tell me questions one through four here, okay? And use the answer bank for help if you need to. But write these down, okay? Write everything down here, one through four, okay? And draw this diagram, okay? Last day of notes for this unit. So please do a good job and try to understand this concept. If you have to go back and review it, please do so, okay? You know, graphs and this, these concepts will be on the test. So pause this while you finish this summary up. Okay. And study your notes as always. The test is coming up soon. All right. We'll see you next time.